Hi, welcome to My First Quilt. I'm Sarah, and today we're working on an hourglass block that creates the Attic Treasures quilt that's behind me. It's a really fun quilt to play with because you get to collect a whole bunch of fabrics to put together with it. I used all the teaks, and I had several different fabrics for the contrast color in my blocks, and then I had two different neutral background colors. So for each of my blocks, I had two of each of the prints, the colorful prints, one in each of the backgrounds. And when I started cutting out the quilt, I found the best way to keep that organized is just to kind of stack my pieces like I have them here. So what I've done is I've stacked each of my colorful prints with the different background colors so that I'll be ready to stitch them. And here's my blue with the different background colors that I've worked with. It's a lot of fun to put this quilt together and it's a lot of fun to collect the fabrics for. And one of the fun things about playing with batiks is that you really can put together a whole bunch of different colors and then with that neutral background, it just kind of sets the whole thing off and frames it in. And then I opted for a dark brown for my sashing just to kind of frame in my colorful blocks and just kind of calm it down just a little tiny bit. So really quick, easy sewing. You make a lot of hourglass blocks. You can make them in a hurry and then you put them together in a different orientation to create the block that you see in the quilt. So it all starts with these squares of fabric and you're going to stack them right sides together, one of your colorful prints and one of your neutrals. And then you need to mark corner to corner down the center and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch from the center on each side. So very simple half square triangle units. For that, I like to use this little Fonz and Porter tool that gives me a straight line down the center. I've got those little yellow lines. And then I just mark on either side of the ruler, just like this with a marking pen. Use a fine tipped marking pen. It makes it a little bit more precise when you sew. So I'm just gonna reposition my hand there. Almost done. And now you have your marked lines a quarter of an inch from center on both sides, left and right. You could put a pin in that and now you want to just sew down each of those lines. And for my stitching, I'm just using a really standard straight stitch, but I'm gonna activate pivot position because that allows me to stop and maneuver my fabric if I need to. And I also like to use the guide beam because it helps me to sew straight. But any straight stitch, you just wanna make sure that you follow the line. Use whatever foot makes it easiest for you to see and follow your marked line. Because the key to this block is precision. So I've stitched the first side, now I'll rotate it around and stitch down the other side. The straighter you're stitching, the more square your half square triangle units will be, and that'll make it easier to put the quilt together. There we go. So I've stitched down both of my marked lines, and now I'm ready to cut. Just going to cut right down the center so I'm a quarter of an inch from each of my stitching lines. So when I do this, I usually just line up my ruler so that the quarter inch marking is on one of the stitching lines. Give it a cut. And now we press them open. I like to lay mine on my pressing mat with the dark color facing up. And that way, when I open it up and press, I'm automatically pressing my seam to the dark side. Now, when you're creating these blocks, we're going to stitch these back together, lining up those seam allowances. So by pressing in the same direction to the dark, on every single one of these blocks, you're going to find that your seams will nest together really nicely and make your sewing easier. So here I have my two half square triangle units, and now I'm going to place them right sides together so that I have opposite colors touching. I've got my neutral fabric touching my colorful fabric, just like I had in the first sewing step. Make sure, feel along that seam line that your seams are perfectly nested. Make sure your points line up and then you're going to take that same tool and mark down each side of center again. So line up the yellow line on the points of your corners. Mark, I'm gonna rotate my body a little bit. Mark the other side. Now, if you're working with dark colored batiks, you might find that having a white marking pencil is really helpful because on the dark batik, sometimes it's kind of hard to see those darker lines. This one, I think I'll still be able to see, but I know that on some of my darker brown batiks, I had to use a white marking pencil. So now we're going to repeat the same process where we stitch right down each of those lines. Now 
we go. That guide beam really helps me to see that I'm sewing straight on the dark fabric too. I really like that. Rotate it around and we'll stitch the other side. And there we go. Now for each of your color sets, you have five of your squares, which will create a total of 10 of these little hourglass blocks. I'm gonna cut this apart, just like that. And we'll press it open. And now we have that pretty little hourglass block. So again, you end up with 10 of these, but it only takes nine to actually create the quilt. So here I've got a stack of them that I have sewn already. Let me grab one more, there we go. And the layouts, follow the layout diagram as you put these together, but it's really not that complicated. You're going to place them in opposite directions. So here our first top right corner faces with the colors out. Then you're going to place the next one with your colors top and bottom, and then the third with your colors facing out. Now, for the middle row, all three are going to face up. And what that does for us is it creates little square shapes within our pattern. So there we've got a square of our color and actually a little sideways diamond of our neutral print. And then for the bottom row, and of course this is a little bit different background, but that's okay. We go back to the original layout. So colors facing out, up and down, and out. And this is the block that you create. Now you're going to sew these together. I worked in rows with a nice careful quarter inch seam, and then I sewed those rows together. When you line these up to stitch them together, I found that I could kind of rotate the blocks around until I could feel that some of my seams were in opposite directions and just nest them together. So here I've got this seam right here, my two seams, because of the way they're pressed, are nested together. And now I'm going to stitch along that straight edge again with a quarter inch seam. Now you want to really make sure you take your time while you're setting these together so that they're nice and straight. There we go. Make sure you've got a really accurate quarter inch seam. And then when we open it up, you can see that the points of my triangles are there. We've got really nice, perfect triangle points. Like I said, the key there is to make sure that you take your time in setting it up, sew those first couple of lines perfectly straight, and then nest your seams and you get really beautiful corners in your triangle block. So again, you would just create all three rows and then sew those three rows together. And I've got a couple done over here. And then you come up with this pretty block. And now the fun part starts. You get to kind of audition and play with the placement of your blocks. Now keep in mind that if you have them turned different directions, here I have my neutrals in the center. And actually in this block, it's supposed to be the prints in the center facing up and down. So before you start sewing your blocks together, make sure you have them all turned so that they're in the same orientation so you get the right look of the quilt. I know that when I laid mine out on my design wall, I had a couple turned sideways and I had to tear out a couple seams to fix them and turn them the right way. So you get to pick a perfect sashing. There are little cornerstones in the square that go in between each of the blocks. And that's what's going to frame in all of those beautiful fabrics that you've selected. So those are the tips to creating a simple and precise hourglass block. You wanna make sure that you're measuring and sewing really accurately a quarter of an inch from center in those first couple steps, and that you really carefully put your corners together and nest your seams so that you've got those precise little perfect points in your corners. Be sure to check out your local fabric shop, collect a whole bunch of beautiful batiks, you could do vintage fabrics, you could choose any assortment of fabrics that look good with a neutral background in the block to create this beautiful quilt. We'll see you next time. This episode of My First Quilt has been brought to you by Babylock, for the love of sewing. OmniGrid, providing quilters with specialty rulers and accessories for over 30 years. Furniture provided by Koala. 
Fine Sewing Furniture, custom built for you.